Hey, what's going on guys? So today we're gonna take a break from explaining every Temtem of each type and explore Temtem evolution and how it differs from that of Pokemon evolution. This will also help to dismay any misconceptions surrounding which levels each Tem evolve at. And we will also go over how some of the early game Temtem evolve and what to expect. Evolution in most monster taming games is akin to a permanent boost in power. Think of it as if Goku were to go Super Saiyan and exist in that form with that base power forever. It is a permanent form change that sometimes involves the altering of types, abilities, stats, etc. But I'm sure anyone who's played Pokemon or even just watched the show already understands this. Temtem does have its own system in place regarding evolution, which isn't too different from Pokemon, but it is noteworthy nonetheless. As of right now, most Temtem will evolve via level up, so that's the sort of comparison we'll be focusing on. Okay, so let's say you have the Pokemon Bulbasaur. When Bulbasaur hits level 16, it'll evolve into Ivysaur, and then again at level 32 into Venusaur. In Pokemon, every Pokemon that evolves via level up has a set level in which it will evolve, with the exception of some uh, Pokemon that evolve via level up with a held item. Here's another example. Dratini evolves into Dragonair at level 30 and then again into Dragon Knight at level 55. Unless you're a dirty hacker who's using Team Rocket's radio waves to evolve your Pokemon early. If you catch Dratini at level 15, you'd train at 15 levels and it would evolve. If you were to catch it at level 23, you'd train at 7 levels and it would evolve. Simple enough. If you were to catch it above that level 30 threshold, it would evolve after one level up any time past level 30. It's a very simple concept and very easy to keep track of. If a Pokemon is at or above a set level, it will evolve to whichever evolution is defined. This method of evolution has its pros and cons, which we will go into now. The main pro is that you'll always know when your Pokemon will evolve no matter what, it'll always evolve. Nothing else to consider. The con, however, is that it is up to the developers to really make sure that the Pokemon are caught at a decent level in comparison to which part of the story you're at. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's say you're playing Sun and Moon and you catch a very high level Jangmoo. Well, it's going to evolve in one level so you're not really going to get the opportunity to train in its base form. For example, and I, I don't have an exact level, but I think you can find Jangmoos near the end of the game at level 40. So at level 41, it evolves. I believe it's the same with uh, Dragapult's pre-evolution. To some extent, that's a good thing because the base forms of the pseudos generally suck, but to others, perhaps it breaks immersion. The way Temtem handles it is different, so each Temtem has a set number of levels it needs to gain under your command before it evolves. So in this case, let's say you have the Temtem Paharo. It'll evolve after seven levels. This does not mean level seven. This means that from when you caught it, you will need to gain seven levels to evolve. So if you caught it at level two, it'll evolve at level nine. If you caught it at level seven, it'll evolve at level 14. This method also has its pros and cons. The con is that you have to remember the level you caught that Temtem at in order to know when it evolves. It can be a little bit annoying to be completely honest, but it is what it is. The pro is that you'll be able to actually use the Temtem you caught before it evolves no matter what level it is. This is something I am quite on board with personally. You won't have to worry about finding a first form late game and not being able to use it. This can also be a con depending on how your playstyle is. I personally think it's a welcome addition, but I'm not going to sit here and tell you which one is better as I appreciate both systems. I do have one concern about this method of evolving, however. If there is a three stage Temtem and it needs 20 levels to evolve once and then 20 levels again, and the level cap is level 100, if that Temtem is level 60 upon being caught, you'd literally have to train it to max level. Furthermore, what if you caught it at level 61? Would it be locked from its final form? Now, I'm sure Kremo would make sure that doesn't happen, but I'm just curious as to how this system may limit them in the future. One other really cool addition to evolution that I wish Pokemon would have picked up a while back is the fact that your Temtem will evolve mid-battle. Once you hit the level you need to hit, boom, you evolve. This is honestly something I didn't know that I needed in my life. It makes you feel like you're in the battle. It reminds me of the Pokemon anime, when a Pokemon will evolve mid-battle and turn the tide of the fight. I honestly love it. And also on a side note, if you do want to cancel your evolution, just hit the escape key on your keyboard and it'll cancel it. There's also another form of evolution known as Meta Mimetic, which is essentially akin to something like Eevee from Pokemon. It's just the idea that some Temtem like Tawai can have a branched evolutionary line instead of a linear one. Not too much to state on that. So I figured while we're here, we might as well look at some of the early game Temtem requirements before we wrap things up. For those of you interested in the starter evolutions, I did do a video discussing them a while back and I'll leave a link to that in the description below and there'll be a little video card you can click on as well. We're essentially just going to go over some of the first Temtem you'll encounter along your journey to get you started if you're not already. 
Paharo is our early game Pidgey equivalent and evolves after 7 levels into Paharak and then again after 16 more levels. If you catch a level 2 Paharo, the earliest you can get it to its third stage is level 25. Kaku is another early game Tem and evolves into Saku after 11 levels. Swelly evolves into Loali after 8 levels. Anyways guys, so let me know what you think of the Temtem method of evolution and how it compares. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Are you like me and somewhere in the middle on it? I think both Pokemon and Temtem methods are both positive and negative in their own ways, and I couldn't really rank one as better than the other. So with all that being said, make sure to like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter at GymLeaderEd, and until next time, peace.